Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is nine o'clock on a Sunday, which means it's time for a review show special. And today I'm going to be looking at Dietrichs. I'm going to be looking at Wayne Dobson's website. Now, Wayne Dobson uh, is an incredible person. I'm sure everyone watching this has heard of Wayne. He has an incredible inspirational story um, that runs through his whole career. Uh, but several years ago, he started creating magic out of necessity. I'm not going to go into the story right now. However, I will tell you that on Wednesday, so just a few days ago, I put up the interview that I did with Wayne Dobson, uh, where we talked through his whole career. We talked about the highs and the lows, what happened when he got MS, and what led him to start creating and performing magic, uh, creating magic and, and, and what his goals and aspirations are with Dietrichs, which is his actual um, sort of company website that he sells all of his tricks through. Uh, Wayne has created some amazing magic. Even when way back when I was on the Wizard Product Review in the early days, like 10 or 11 years ago, uh, I always used to love it when one of Wayne's new routines came in because it would always fool not just David Penn, but everybody I performed it to. And I remember an episode of the Wizard Product Review a little while ago, we looked at the Look No Hands uh, booklet that Wayne bought out. And I learned from in there a card routine, a sort of a four ace assembly. And I, I performed it to Dave on the Wizard Product Review and he was just completely blown away. And that's the thing with a lot of Wayne's material. It is very, very clever and very well thought out. So I advise you, if you haven't already done so, to go check out the interview with Wayne. Um, it's gonna be in the playlist, the Talk Magic playlist. We'll also put a link in the comments down below and the, uh, in the description down below. But this is not the interview with Wayne. This is me doing a review show special, looking at some of the routines that Wayne has released. Now, over the last few months on Craig and Ryland's review show, we've already reviewed a whole bunch of the newer stuff that Wayne's brought out. Uh, I think the last thing we looked at was The Call, which is incredible. Uh, Ryland performed that. But today I'm going to be looking at some other stuff, stuff that has come out in the last year and maybe stuff older than that as well. Um, and, and the key thing that I want you to see when I start reviewing all of Wayne's material is it is very, very commercial. It really is. It, it, it's very well thought out. And because... Wayne's in a position where he can't really do much sleight of hand anymore. A lot of the stuff that he creates is is almost completely self-working, which means that it allows you to focus on the presentation instead of worrying about the methodology, if that makes sense. Um, and I hope that by doing this review show special, I'm going to be highlighting to you a whole bunch of routines that you might not have seen before, because sometimes some of Wayne's stuff goes under the radar. Now, before I start the interview, I, uh, the interview, sorry, uh, before I start the review show, I will say to you, if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to Wayne's um, YouTube channel, because Wayne and Mike Sullivan, uh, they have uh, this thing called Coffee Morning, which is a uh, interview slot that they do once a week, and it is incredible incredible. So if you haven't already subscribed to their channel, please do so. Uh, but let's have a look at the first routine uh, uh, from Dietrich. Okay, so the first routine that I'm going to be looking at is Houdini 1926 by Wayne Dobson and Alan Wong. I believe Alan made the props for this. Um, this is what I would refer to as pipe and slipper magic. This is not the sort of thing that you're going to bust out uh, in the middle of a close-up gig and, and, and do over and over again. But for the right time and for the right place, this will absolutely kill. It's, it's basically a, I mean, I mean, there's been versions of this before where the spectator gets to make all of the choices. But the thing that makes this so good is the premise or the hook line. I've talked on this channel before about the importance of having a hook that grabs the audience's attention. Rather than just presenting a trick to people, you try to make it as engaging as possible so they get, kind of get drawn into the performance. And that's what you have here. You have this really engaging premise. Uh, the props look very realistic. Uh, you can talk about the history of magic. Uh, in fact, if you've not seen this before, let me do a full performance of it first of all. So I'm going to perform this for you so you can see what it looks like and then I'll talk to you about what I think about it. Um, I have um, I have Sarah behind the camera. You're going to be helping me. Is that okay, Sarah? Yeah. Now you know that I love magic, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, not only do I love magic, I actually, as you know, I read a lot of magic books and I'm really into magical history and I've got something here which I don't know if you're going to appreciate this, but this is amazing. Uh, we'll get back to this in a minute. What I have here is I have replicas of posters of some of the greatest magicians of the last century. 
Um, these are actually accurate representations. You can actually go to the Magic Circle headquarters in London and you can see all of these, uh, all of these, all the actual posters. But these are um, sort of smaller versions, but they, they look amazing. They really do. Now, I'm guessing you don't know many of the magicians here. Do you know any? Maybe you yeah, recognize some. I know a few. I know you've been to the circle before, so you might recognize a few. Obviously, the person who is most recognizable is Harry Houdini. But, I mean, yeah. David Devont, he's actually got an, his own room named after him in the Magic Circle. The Devont Room. So, is that a key, a keto? A keto, yeah, that's the right. A keto box. Actually, you know what? I don't know whether a keto actually came up with the a keto box. I don't think he did. Um, I, 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 I don't know. But I don't know. I don't know. I digress. We're going to do something with a coin. And also this letter. Now, this is obviously a reproduction. This is not a real letter from the, ni uh, from the 1900s. This is a reproduction. But uh, Harry Houdini, this is all about Houdini. A lot of people don't realise this, but Harry Houdini, a lot of people think of him as an escapologist, but he did a lot more than escapology. Uh, I mean, he was known as the king of cards. His card magic was amazing, but he could do anything. He could even read people's minds from beyond the grave. That's right, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Harry Houdini is going to read your mind from beyond the grave. Okay. This is a letter he wrote in 1926. This is a representation of it. This is kind of a facsimile that you can pick up from the circle. Um, the real letter you can go and check out in the circle if you want to. Um, but we're going to use this letter along with this coin to play a little game and we'll see if Harry Houdini can read your mind from beyond the grave. Now the idea is we've got this coin and we basically have nine options here and you're going to be moving this coin around. Now when I say move it around uh, that is one move going in either direction is one move. Uh, sideways is also one move and you can go back and forth in either direction so if I told you to move the coin seven times you could go one two three four five six seven or you could you could do whatever you want to do you understand okay. can I go diagonally you cannot go diagonally that's a very good question you cannot go right, diagonally okay, okay? Um, and we're going to do this so uh, this is Houdini there you go there you go this is Houdini uh, writing to you from 1926 I will predict every move you're about to make to start well first of all we need to put the coin somewhere where would you like to put the coin in the middle. In the I can't middle. See what that says. Chung, Chung Ling Su. He's oh, okay. famous for dying attempting a bullet catch. Oh dear. <laughs> there you go, right? Um, so to start, he's going to predict every move you make. So to start, you're going to move the coin seven times. So you're behind the camera, so you tell me and I'll, I'll, I'll move it for you. Okay, let's go uh, across to Thurston. One. Down. Two. Across. Three. Up. Four. Up. Five. Uh, Alexander. Six. Down. Seven. Right there, yeah? Uh -huh. On Kasna. Let's continue reading. You, you had the free choice there. You moved it around as much as you wanted to, right? Yeah. As you can see, as you have not landed on Alexander or David Devont, make them disappear. And he's right. You didn't land on Alexander or David yeah. Devont, so we're going to make those disappear. Right, okay. Now move the, the coin five more times. Okay, go across. One. Up. Two. Across. Three. Down. Four. Down. Five. Onto Carter. Let's open up the letter a little bit more. I know you have not landed on either Kastner or Akito, so you can remove both of them. I mean, this is really spooky stuff when you think about it, but there goes Kastner mm -hmm. and there goes Akito. Okay. Now move the coin three times. Uh, up, across, up. To Keller? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> By now, you will have realised... I know your every move from a century ago. I know you're not on Chung Ling Su or Carter. There you go, Chung Ling Su or Carter. There you go, so we move those two. You now have right. three cards left. I'd like you to move the coin three more times. Okay. Houdini, Keller, Houdini. Sure? Yeah. Let's have a look and see where we are. I know you're not on Keller or Thurston, so you can place them aside, not on Keller. Not on first, and you can place those aside. That is a picture of Harry Houdini, <laughs> which only leaves the greatest magician of all time, Harry Houdini. He was able to... Houdini, yeah. He, 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 yeah, I mean, that was amazing. But here's the thing. Just in case you think that that was a fluke, which it wasn't, let's have a look at what was on the other side. You see, the whole thing was indeed predetermined. No way. Yes way, because on the other side, you can see... We had a poster of Houdini proving that he knew exactly what you would do from 100 years ago. So that's, that's Houdini's 1926. It is completely self-working. 
Uh, if you just follow the download, it's Mike Sullivan on the download. It's like a 10 minute download, but that's all it needs. It's not having to teach advanced sleight of hand. It's just having to teach the procedure. And a lot of the time, I don't like tricks with lots of procedure, but this doesn't feel like it's got a lot of procedure because it, the, the letter, in my opinion, is what makes this really genius because uh, the letter, uh, it, it, the apparent concept of Houdini reading your mind from the past. Now, the one thing I didn't like is Mike talks about how you say this is an actual letter from Houdini, but when you look at it, it's obviously just like printed on there. It's obviously being printed onto a computer. So I talk about how you can see the original letter in the Magic Circle uh, archives, but this is a, a replica and you can actually get it from there if you visit the Magic Circle. And again, this is all about making this whole thing interesting. And when you bring out those posters and you can talk about, if you're a magic historian, you can talk about the different, uh, you know, the different posters and who this magician is and this magician is if somebody's watching you do magic they'll find that fascinating as long as it's performed at the right time right place you then do the routine it feels really fair and even though there's only one revelation at the end um it's it's cool because they feel like they can move this coin around wherever they want to but throughout the letter you're removing cards that they're not landing on. So it feels like there's lots of little moments building up to one big moment, if that kind of makes sense. And I very much like the unfolding of the letter. It reminds me a bit of Simon Aronson's shuffleboard, where you open up and you show another thing, and you open up and you show another thing. Um, so the procedure isn't an issue at all. And then you get to this final revelation, and you've got the picture of Houdini, and it's signed Harry Houdini, and it's like, oh my gosh, that's such a great moment. And just when they think it's over, you turn the cards over and you've got the the Houdini poster at the end it's a really well thought out trick now um there's no negatives to this as such because it's self-working it's an almost instant reset it's ready to go anytime anywhere you'll be doing it within 20 minutes of watching the download I will say you have to pick the right time and the right place to do this. If you're doing a wedding uh, and you're doing table magic at a wedding and you're trying to grab their attention, it's a noisy environment, this is not the sort of thing that you want to bust out for several different reasons. One, it's not going to, it's going to require people's undivided attention. And a lot of the time at close-up gigs, you're, you're not in a situation where you've got their undivided attention. Also, you're going to need quite a bit of table space, so this isn't going to work for sort of mix and mingle. I'll tell you where this will work. Um, uh, this is like uh, David Penn calls this pipe and slipper magic. In the bar at the end of the night, and the client comes up to you and says thanks, and says, oh, how long have you been doing magic, or whatever it is, and you get some small talk, and then you can kind of shift into this. Well, actually, I'm a bit of a magical historian. I love magic. I love the history of magic. Would you like to see something that I picked up that's really interesting last time I went to the Magic Circle headquarters? And you can get into this from that point that's a great time to do this a parlor show this would be great in a parlor show a zoom show this would work really well in a zoom show especially with an overhead cam because you can have the overhead camera you can see this whole uh, layout and they can make all of the decisions and everyone can share. So it's really interactive over the screen. So there's places where this will work, but understand this is, and, and this will work in a restaurant as well. When you're doing restaurant magic, normally they've got nice big tables and when the, the food's been cleared away, you've got a lot of table space. It doesn't need a close-up mat or anything. But you tend to find with a restaurant, you have people that come back every single week. What you got new for me now? What you got new for me now? This is a nice thing. They're already... You've already established credibility with these people. They already know who you are. Uh, they're already invested in your performance. So um, when you bring this out, you can afford to spend a few minutes talking about it. So it doesn't have to be that quick fire. Boom, 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 boom. So yeah, I, I, I think this is great. I think it's wonderful. I love the props. I'm going to give it 90%. Am I going to do this? Yes. Am I going to do it all the time? No. But I think that having this with me in my close-up bag and being able to do it at the right time, at the right place, I think this is going to absolutely kill. So the next thing we're going to be looking at is this. This is called Win or Lose by Wayne Dobson. And again, this is available through Dietrich. Now, what is Win or Lose? Win or Lose is a... This is probably one of my favourite effects that I'm going to be actually reviewing on this uh, on this review show special. i would never seen this before. This is incredible. I absolutely love this. I've talked on the channel before about I'm a big fan of gambling routines. I do a lot, not gambling card routines. I'm not a fan of gambling card routines. I'm a big fan of kind of betches, uh, fast and loose I do all the time. Three disc Monty, three shell Monty. Um, uh, win a winner chicken dinner I've started doing a lot recently since I reviewed it on the review show. 
Um, I, I have a full act that runs about half an hour. Uh, it's kind of a Bunko Booth style presentation where I kind of put all of this together. This is 100% going into that act. Um, it's basically, and, and, and this would make a great opener, because the spectator feels like they've got an absolutely free choice um, of, of, of outcome, and you're going to actually apparently influence them every single time. It feels like a close-up version of Bank Night. So if you know like the, the stage routine, Bank Night, where uh, you're giving them a chance to win X amount of money if they get the right envelope, you know, you've, you've probably seen Blank Night by John Archer or uh, one of my favourite versions of it on stage is um, Max Maven's off his Nothing DVD or uh, Richard Ostlander's a great, great version as well. Bank Night's great. Well, this feels like Bank Night style routine, except it's completely self-working and it's designed for close-up. So I'm going to perform the routine for Sarah. She's not seen it before. I'm going to perform the routine for Sarah, first of all, so you can see exactly how this plays. And then we'll talk about what's so good about this. Um, I'm going to give you a chance to win some money. Now, normally when I do this, I give people a chance to win um, uh, like £50. But I know money doesn't mean anything to you. You're not money motivated. So instead, I'm going to give you a chance to win something that I know will motivate you. Uh, if you win at this game, I will do the dishes for the whole month. The whole month. I'll do the dishes for the whole month. Right. Okay. Um, well, that would be a change to normal, so okay. Well, hey, behave. Look, I'll explain how it works. I've got five chips here. Yeah. And you can see that each chip has something different written on them. Uh, you've got yours and mine. You've got something and nothing. And you've got this and that. And I'll tell you right now, there's five winning chips and there's one losing chip. Now, in a minute, I'm going to let you select five chips. If any of the chips that you select is a winning chip, that means you win the game. And if you do win the game, I'll do the dishes for the whole year. If, however, um, you don't get the winning chip and I'm able to influence you, and to be clear, I am going to try and influence you so that you end up with the four losing chips and I end up with the winning chip, then I don't have to do the dishes and you have to go on social media and you have to say to everybody that I am the greatest husband of all time. How's that sound, sir? Uh, okay. Okay. Are you going to take the bet? Why not? I don't trust Why you. Not? Why you don't not? trust me, I can tell. Right, so we've got five. You've got five. Now, psychologically, some of these are more appealing than others. For example, um, why would you possibly want to end up with nothing? Because it's obvious that there's nothing on there. But is it? Could that be a double bluff? Also, you've got yours and mine. So that's another example. Would you want to take that one because it's mine? And therefore, if it's mine, it's going to be the winning one. Or am I, again, double bluffing you? Uh, don't try and think too much into it. You have got five chances to win. I'm going to snap my fingers like this. And when I do, uh, I want you to name one of the chips, whichever one you name. I'm going to slide it off to one side. We're going to do that five times. So we'll start right now. Yours. Okay, you want that one over there? Yeah. Interesting. Every single time I've played this game, nobody has ever gone for yours first. But that's okay. That's interesting. That's good. So we've got five chips left. I'm going to do this again. Nothing. You want nothing? Are you sure? Mm -hmm. I'll put nothing over there. No problem. You want nothing, you get nothing. We've got four chips left. We've got that, this. I this. I haven't even snapped my fingers. This. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. So that leaves us with that something and mine. What one would you like now? I'll snap my fingers. That. You want that? Okay, that leaves us with something and mine. Now, you've got one last chance. Here we go. Something. Okay, so you're left with mine, even though I pointed out at the very, very beginning that that might be the one that you're left with. You've actually gone for the thing that I said that you would do. Now, let me explain why I always win this game, and I do always win this game. And the reason I always win this game is because at the very, very end, I give people a chance to change their mind. So would you like to change your mind and swap that back for any of these, or are you happy to stay with mine? No, I'm going to stick. You're going to stick? Yeah. You want to change your mind, or are you happy? You're happy? Um, well, yeah. I don't want you saying I changed my mind because I can I can put that back there. But no, you, you you want mine, yes? Yeah. And I gave you a choice to change your mind. You made all the decisions, didn't you? The first one you put over here, yours, that's a lose. The next one, nothing, is a lose. Mm. The next one, this, is a lose. The next one, that, is a lose. The next one, something, is a lose. And you decided that you would leave mine. And luckily... That is mine, because that is the only winning chip. And that is why I won't be doing the dishes for the rest of the year, and you will be going on social media and Hang saying... Hang on, you said I'm, the rest of the month. I meant year. I meant year. You said month, that was meant, the best. I meant year. So. I meant year. I meant year. No change to normal, really. 
Now, obviously, you wouldn't bet, uh, you know, who's going to do the washing up if you're performing it in a gig. Uh, that just kind of worked with Sarah, and also I didn't have any money on me. But normally, you'd take like a £50 note out and put it on the table, or you'd take your wallet out, or whatever it may be. Um, but this, th 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 what you just saw there, it works like that every single time. I love the fact that it's so fair. They make all of the decisions. And at the end, you have that lovely Richard Osterlund line where, hey, let me tell you why I always win. I win because at the last minute, I let you change your mind if you want to. It feels so fair. And yet you can immediately show lose, 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 win. Everything is completely examinable at the end. And it's probably a 10 second reset. You get a lovely little pouch that you can put the chips in. Um, so once you've reset it, literally as you're walking away from the table, 10 seconds later, you reset it. And uh, you need to carry a little thing around with you to reset it, but that's not a problem. Uh, and then you put them back in the in the bag and it's ready to go again. It just fits into a pocket, it takes up hardly any pocket space. It doesn't require a, uh, a close-up pad or anything like that. You can do it on any table surface. And I was doing it, because Sarah's behind the camera, I was actually pushing the chips to one side, but there's no reason why you can't push the chips to one side, So why they couldn't push the chips to one side, they can do it themselves. I actually think, and um, they don't talk about this on the, uh, the download, again, this is the download by Mike Sullivan, he does a great job teaching this. Mike doesn't talk about this on the download, but I think you could do this in a walk-around setting. Now, you would need really good audience management, but I think if you had five people with you or six people with you and you had them all hold the hand out and you put one on each hand and um, you had somebody else take them and put them into your hand one at a time leaving them with one which you would then give to them you could very very easily do this walk around but you would need good audience management because you'd have to be in a situation where nobody turns any of those chips over prematurely but there's no reason why this couldn't be done walk around with the correct amount of audience management I absolutely love this. I think this is, Bank Night has always been one of my favorite plots and this is probably the best version of Bank Night I've seen that you can do in a close-up environment. It really is. Um, it's engaging, it makes a great opener. Um, it's, it's not a card trick, it's not a coin trick, which makes it really nice. Um, there's just nothing negative to say about this. And literally, uh, Mike says this when he actually starts the download. He says, this is gonna be the, quickest down quickest instructional download ever and it is it is ridiculously quick because there's nothing to it it's like most of wayne's material it allows you to focus on presentation and you can you can make more of a deal of the words on the back of the chips than i did if you want to that's absolutely fine uh, but it's really good it's really good i'd highly recommend it i am 100 percent putting this into my act i'm going to give this 97 percent uh, no, 98%. I'm going to give this 98%. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Um, and it's highly recommended. Um, yeah, there's nothing negative to say about it. I mean, if you saw the routine and you like the idea of doing that. But, oh, the other thing is, I should tell you very quickly, you don't have to use all six chips if you don't want to. If you want to do, you might want to routine it where you're just using three of the chips and you could do that. That's absolutely fine. You could do it with four of the chips. You can have them just pick the one chip out that you want them to be the winner. You could do it in reverse so they get the winner and you get the losers and you're influencing them to get the winner. Uh, you don't have to do it the way I did it. Just, just, just wanted to bear that in mind. So 98%, absolutely amazing. Highly recommended. Probably my favorite routine out of all of the ones that we're doing on the review show. Okay, so the next routine that I'm going to be looking at is this one here. This is called Triple Exposure by Wayne Dobson in association with Alan Wong. And this is kind of like a, uh, a version of the baby gag, um, but done close up. Now, obviously, I've got my own routine, Gossip, that's designed to be done as a baby gag close up. Uh, this is a completely different approach to doing the baby gag close up. Um, I want to, uh, what's interesting about this is in here, you actually get to learn, uh, Wayne teaches you about a switching device that he's created, uh, which is a gimmickless way of switching one card for another, um, which is really clever. I've never seen this before. And uh, you get all of the props in here. Now there's three different routines you get with this. So you get the cards to do three different routines. You get the cards to do a version of the baby gag, which I'm going to show you in a minute. You also get the, the props to do a uh, couple of other routines, which I'll, I'll, um, I'll talk about after I've shown you the, the baby gang routine. In fact, I'll show you that right now. So this is one of the three routines that you can actually do with this. It comes with all of the special cards. I'm going to perform the baby gag for you right now. So say I have a little black holder. Can you see that? Yeah. Uh, inside here is a prediction. 
and I'm going to predict the future right now, Sarah. Okay. Um, I could have you think of anything and I could predict what you're going to think of, but let's make it very specific because everyone's talking about politics at the moment. What I want you to do is think of a famous world leader. It doesn't have to be somebody in the UK. In all honesty, when I do this, most people, because I live in the UK, they think of somebody in the UK. You can go further afield. You can do things different to everybody else if you want to. Uh, think of a famous world leader. Can you do that for me right now? your favorite donald trump oh, i love donald <laughs> trump love oh. donald trump are you are, are you happy with donald trump yeah? yeah okay here's the thing check this out i said that i had a prediction here if i turn this around it was a picture of donald trump would that be good yeah check it out look there it is it's donald trump as a baby um some people would say that donald trump is a baby now but that's 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 actually a it's accurate right color hair. no but that no no it's got it's got the blonde hair look the blonde hair. Said, the right color yeah, hair the right color hair exactly that is Baby, baby Trump. Yeah, I know what you're okay. thinking. You're thinking, what would have happened if you'd thought of somebody like Barack Obama? Well, in all honesty, I had it covered. Um, wouldn't have been an issue, to be perfectly honest. There's Barack Obama. Um, still not impressed. But I'll tell you what. Let me see if I can do some magic. Look, if I do my snap, my magic snap, what I can do is I can age the picture of Donald Trump. I can actually age that picture all around 70-odd years. Uh, and we can make him look just like he does right now there he is donald trump now just so you know and i know people are going to say this so i need to kind of approach this um sarah was not in on it that was not pre-show um it would have worked every single time um wayne talks about in the instructions how most people are going to name uh, Donald Trump if you approach it in a particular way and that's absolutely the case I've tried this five or six times now and and other than one time that's been the case however uh, Wayne goes through a really clever forcing procedure uh, that you can do with just a business card or a piece of paper and a pen that makes it f so that if you don't hit Donald Trump um, you're still going to get to Donald Trump in a very clever way. I'm not going to say how, I'm not going to expose it. Uh, but obviously, the, the, the thing you need to know about that particular routine, it's always going to be Donald Trump. I think you need to understand that because obviously going from table to table, the outcome is not different. Um, but, but what you're getting with this is you're getting the ability to show the baby gag, uh, you show the thing, and then as you turn it over and take it out, um, you've actually switched that card. That, that gimmickless switching device is very, very clever how it works. And you have a reason to take it out because you're showing the other side of the card. And then obviously when you turn it over, uh, you've got Donald Trump. Now the other cards that you get, there's a, uh, there's a card revelation, a playing card revelation, um, which is done kind of with a really weird kind of funny uh, picture of a guy, you know, like a flasher with a map. And he, um, I, I wouldn't particularly do that. I don't work into in, in, in sort of gigs where people would find that funny. Uh, but I, 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 I can imagine that it would play well in the right time, right place. But it's kind of a card revelation um, with a picture of a guy with a flash of Mac on. Um, and then the other one, which I really like, uh, and it reminds me a little bit of Michael Close's clones routine, uh, is a picture of a clown with a red nose on. And you show them and you use the switching device to take the card out and put it down on the table or put it into someone's hand. You don't actually need a table for this. So you can have the switching device in your pocket. You can show the picture, in this case of a clown, take it out, put it in their hand, put the switching device away, and they can be holding on to it. So all of this stuff is designed to work in someone's hand. Uh, you snap your fingers and when they turn it over, the red nose is gone. And then they look up at your face and you've got the red nose on the face. That's probably my favorite routine to do with this particular prop. Uh, I, I didn't do it because A, I haven't got a red nose with me at the moment. Uh, it's in the office. Uh, but two, uh, I don't think that routine would work on camera. Uh, you need a bit of misdirection for that routine to work. And anybody who knows Michael Close's clones routine will, will agree to that. But I've been doing that kind of thing with Michael Close's clones routine for years. Uh, if you haven't seen that, it's like a wild card with with blank cards and you end up with loads of clowns and then they look up at your face and you've got a red clown nose on. The moment when they see that that red clown nose is on your face, they freak out. I mean, they proper freak out. I, I wouldn't use the baby gag, to be honest. I prefer gossip because I prefer people having a free choice or apparently a free choice. I also wouldn't do the flasher presentation for it, but I would do the uh, the clown nose thing. I think this would be absolutely great as a little quickie to do, especially if you use a sponge clown nose and then you go into like some sort of sponge ball routine. Uh, and also I think it would be great for at a wedding with kids. I think that would work really well as well. And it's kind of got a really nice moment of misdirection. It's a little bit
bit like a card in the box. Um, and the nice thing about the switching device, again, I think people will see this device, this switching device, and come up with their own ways of actually using it. Wayne's given you three examples here, but there's other stuff you can do as well. Um, you can you can change it around uh, very easily. So if you've got like all of the cards in this pocket and you've got the switching device here, let's say you go to the first table and you do the clown trick, you could just within a few seconds, you could just switch it over. So instead you've got the, uh, you've got the baby gag for the next table. So there's lots of different options with it. Um, I like it. Uh, I like the premise behind it. I'm going to give it 80%. Um, I, I, I think I'm going to use, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to use the clown thing and I'm going to see how that plays. I think it's going to play really well. Um, uh, but, and I really like the switching device. I think there's a lot more that can be done with that. So 80%, uh, it's recommended. It's called uh, triple exposure by Wayne Dobson. Okay. So the next routine is Houdini's pets, Houdini's pets by Alan uh, Wong and Wayne Dobson. Um, this is another one in the Houdini series. You saw Houdini's 1926 earlier. Uh, this is another one in the Houdini series. And what you get with this, interestingly, is you get another one of those switching devices. You get a really big version this time, which is quite nice because like I said, with triple exposure, you can use this for a whole bunch of other stuff. And if you're doing like a big table style thing, uh, you could very easily work out what the size of the cards are in here and then print your own cards off so you can use this in any way that you want to. And having a bigger version is great for if you've got a bigger table or you're doing a parlor show or something. Um, so, but yeah, that's what you get with this. You get a bigger version of that switching device from triple exposure and you get the routine Houdini's pets. Um, I have thoughts on this particular trick, uh, and I'm going to go through them with, a, with you in a second, but I'm going to perform the routine first of all. So let's have a look at a full performance of this routine. I'm going to perform it to Sarah, and then we'll talk about what I think about it. <coughs> Is it going to make me laugh? It's going to make you laugh. Well, it's, it's going to be about something that you like, because you like pets, don't you? You like, you like animals. Well, yeah. You're, so. an, you're an animal lover. Um, so I'm going to, uh, we're going to, we're going to think of some animals. I've got a, a, a picture here of Houdini, which I'll I'll get to in a minute. And um, I'm going to write five numbers down here. Um, can you name a number from one to five for me? Four. Okay, cool. And uh, I want you to name some pets, some, some things, that, some animals that people would have as pets. Rabbit. Okay, that's a, that's a, that's a good one. We'll, um, yeah. In fact, let's name, let's name all of them now. So uh, five, five animals that people have as pets. Uh, rabbit, dog, cat... Rabbit, dog, bird. cat, bird. Fish. Fish. Okay, let me put those down in the order you said them. So it was rabbit. What was next? Mm -hmm. dog. 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 Cat. Okay. Cat. Bird. Fish. Bird. Fish. That was the order, wasn't it? Yeah. Fish. There we go. So we've got rabbit, dog, cat, bird, fish. We'll get back to that in a minute. Okay? Yeah. But those are our five animals. And you chose the animals, right? Yeah. What I have here is I have a picture of Houdini. And does that show up on the camera? What you can see here is he's got, he's got a bird on his head. Yeah. Um, he's, got, he's got a rabbit. Uh, a couple of he's got a couple of rabbits. I don't see him with a fish, to be perfectly honest. I don't see a dog or a cat there. I mean, he's a magician, so it's really birds and rabbits, to be perfectly honest. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and do something here. Check this out. Look, can you see the picture of Houdini? I'm just going to put him here for a minute, right? Okay. Now, I can't even remember, to be honest, Sarah. What number did you say? I said four. You said four. Okay, right. I couldn't even remember. So, uh, four is dog, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and he didn't have a picture of a dog in the, uh, in, in the picture, did he? But Houdini yeah. did have a dog. Did he? Yeah. He had a dog. The dog was called Charlie. Okay. Yeah. He had a dog. He was an animal lover. He had a dog called Charlie. Okay. And you could have said anything. You could have said, you know, you could have said any number. You could have said any five pets. We wrote them down in the order in which you said. We could have said anything. We could, anything could have happened, but you ended up on dog, didn't you? Yeah. That was a completely free choice. And as I say, it's weird because Houdini has got a dog, but obviously you're giving me a puzzled look. You don't believe me. Let me see if I can do some magic. Yeah. Houdini and Charlie. Check this out. Look at this. There he is. Houdini and his little dog, Charlie. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, I'll have to say to you, it's kind of worth buying A, for the big switching device, and B, to learn that force. That, that uh, selection of the dog was forced, and it's a really clever way of doing it. It's the same forcing procedure that I talked about in the previous trick, in the triple exposure. 
other than I got a direct hit with uh, with Donald Trump. Uh, with this particular one, uh, I didn't, so I went into the forcing procedure. But if she'd said dog at the beginning, I would have just stopped right there and I wouldn't have gone into that forcing procedure. It's very, very clever. It doesn't come with a download. It doesn't need to. It comes with a full PDF. Um, I don't particularly like the actual trick, I'll be honest with you. Um, I don't. It's not my style. I, I don't think it's that magical you know like look uh here's some pictures of houdini's pets look oh dog oh look now houdini's holding a dog i don't think it's that it doesn't fit now there's going to be somebody watching this that probably would do this and it would kill and it would work in their act and that's one thing that i've learned in all the years that i've, I've reviewed products it's amazing that some stuff that i think is absolute trash other people go, no, I do that all the time, and it's really good. Uh, so I'm sure there's somebody out there that would that would love doing this. This, for me, isn't something that I would ever do. Uh, I don't think there's enough magic in it. I don't think that the revelation is strong enough to go through the presentation of the, 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 the whole Houdini setup at the beginning. Contrast this to Houdini's 1926, which was the first thing that I reviewed, which I thought was absolutely amazing. That is so much more magical than this. Uh, so much more magical than this. Now, the only way that I could see this working is if I was doing a whole Houdini set. I mean, Wayne has released enough Houdini's magic tricks to do a full set about Houdini, where you're just basically doing a 20-minute set and every single trick is about Houdini. Um, if you were doing that, then, hey, it might be nice to throw this in. If you're doing, like, a, a, a theme thing to Houdini and you say, hey, by the way, did you know that Houdini likes pets? Yeah, a lot of people don't know this, but, yeah. In fact, let me show you something kind of really weird. Look, here's a picture of him holding a load of pets. Then maybe it would work. But I'm never going to do this. I'm never going to put this into my act. I, I, I couldn't give it enough justice. I couldn't do it justice, really. Uh, just because I don't believe in the revelation. I just don't think it's strong enough. Um, the reason I would suggest you get this, if you're going to get it, is to get that switching device, the instructions on how it works, the big version, and that force that Wayne talks about. I think that's absolutely great. But I personally, and it's only my opinion, I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, I'm going to give it 60%. It's not terrible. It's like anything that Wayne's brought out. It is, it is, I'm sure that you could work this in the real world and you could do a really great job with it. I'm sure that Wayne would go out and do this. I mean, come on, this is a guy that went out on the Royal Variety Show and did a SpongeBob routine and made his name. I'm sure he could go to any gig anywhere in the world and do this and absolutely kill with it. And it's all everybody would talk about. I couldn't do that. I'm not a big fan of Houdini's pets. If I'm doing close-up magic, and this is a close-up trick, and I've only got 10 minutes to perform to that group of people, I can think of a million things more magical than starting to talk about Houdini's pets and having a picture of a dog appear with Houdini. It's just, it's just not my style. Maybe I don't get it, but that's my opinion. I'm going to give it 60%. But hey, you saw the performance. If you like what you saw, brilliant, great, get it. But for me... This is not anything that I'm ever going to do. So the final routine that I want to talk about right now is the Ultimate Tossed Out Deck by Wayne Dobson. I should say that I do Tossed Out Deck and I've done it for years and I've used Wayne Dobson's presentation. Wayne Dobson's presentation for the Dos Tossed Out Deck is, in my opinion, the best way and the only way to present the Tossed Out Deck. Rather than having that moment where everybody sits down uh, at the same time, you're getting three rounds of applause it really builds it up it's such a nice way to do it um what we have here is we have wayne's version of the actual tossed out deck now normally when you're performing a tossed out deck it can't be examined you can't show the deck at all because of how the trick works you can't show the deck you can't show the deck at all you, you can't do that um, and then you wrap the elastic band out and you throw it out, but you want to be careful that they don't riffle up that deck because they'll see how it works. That's not the case with this. With this, the big strength of this is you can spread the deck face up. You can show that all the cards are different. You can have the cards shuffled. They can do an overhand shuffle. You can do a waterfall shuffle. You can show all of the cards are really thoroughly mixed up. And then they wrap the elastic band around it. And as soon as they've done that, you go into the tossed out deck presentation. And it is 
killer. It is the best way to do the tossed out deck because you're very clean. You're not doing a deck switch. Up until this point, I'm going to do this from now on for the tossed out deck. Up until this point, I've been doing John Archer's way of doing the tossed out deck, which involves a deck switch and they taught it on educating Archer. But this is a way better way of doing it because I'm not switching the deck. I'm showing the deck, giving it them. They're looking through it. They're putting the elastic band on it. I don't have to touch anything. It's brilliant. But in the download, which runs about an hour, uh, Peter Nardi and Mike Sullivan sit down and they talk about other stuff you can do with this as well. There's a nice routine where you divide the deck into three sections. Each person gets a different section. All of them get wrapped around and you've got a really nice multiple selection there. And you've got a really nice direct mind reading routine by Peter Nardi, which is killer. I mean, killer. In fact, I'm going to perform that for you. I'm going to perform it right now. I have Sarah behind the camera. Hey, Sarah. Hey. Uh, and I've got a deck of cards here. Yeah, 52 yeah. cards. Now, I don't want you to think I'm going to cheat. Uh, I'm going to cheat. I just don't want you to think I'm going to, to be honest. So first of all, what I want you to do is just take the cards and just give them a spread out face up and just make sure that they're, uh, they're all there and they're all different as far as you can see. Yeah. Yeah. And do you want to give them a quick shuffle as well? Just give them a quick... Uh, Sarah, hello. Just give them a quick shuffle for me. That would be amazing. And when you're happy that they're mixed up in any random order, let me know. Are they good? Yeah. Now, can you take this elastic band and can you wrap it around the middle of the deck, but double wrap it, going um, uh, not lengthways, widthways. There it's you like go. Normally. Yeah, like you. exactly. So double wrap it around. And when you've done that, let me know. Right. Are we good? Yeah. Pop the cards right there. Now think about this for a minute. You shuffled the cards, didn't you? Yeah. I couldn't possibly know what order they're in. You spread them out and make sure that they're all there, yeah? Yeah. I'm going to get you to pick a card. Okay. And I don't even want to touch the card. So here's what's going to happen. You're going to take the deck. And when I snap my fingers, you're going to riffle up the deck and stop any way you want to. And you're going to look at the card that you stopped at. Okay, do you understand? So you're going to yeah. riffle up the deck and you're going, to, you're going to stop and you're going to look at the card anywhere. So... Yeah. I want you to do that for me right now. Take the deck. Very yeah. good. And you, when I snap my fingers, riffle up and stop anywhere you want to and look at the card that you stopped at. Have a peek at it. Yeah. Have you got that? Yeah. Very good. Now you hold on to the cards. Close that peek up. Uh, in fact, you can just put them on the table. And uh, very good. Now, you are obviously now thinking of a playing card. I couldn't possibly know what the card is. Uh, it's not the King of Spades. I know that. So I, I know it's not one of the 51 cards. Now, packs of cards are divided into two. They're divided into red cards or black cards. Um, let's see if I can hone in on your card. I'm going to snap my fingers when I do. I'm going to get an impression. Here we go. Yeah. Your card. I'm telling you right now, your card was a black card. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Now, now there's 26 black cards, clubs and spades. Uh, concentrate. Yeah, your card's a spade, is that right? Yes. Now think about the impossibility of this. You shuffled the cards. You could have picked any card. It was completely free choice. You wrapped the elastic band around it. I haven't even touched the cards. Let's see if we can go one step further. There's pick, uh, the spades, there's 13 the values. There's all of the picture cards, which are the Jack, Queen, Kings. We'll throw the aces in there as well. And then you've got the number cards, the two through to 10. Um, concentrate on the on the value. It's a number card, isn't it, Sarah? It's a number card. Yeah. Yeah, it is a number card. Um, so concentrate on the actual number. Imagine it in your head. Shout it um, as loud as you can. In your head, not out loud, because that would be stupid. If you shouted it out loud, I'd know what it is. But right. in your head, scream it. Imagine you're mad at Ryland, and we want to go for that. Oh, I love the face you're pulling right now. Um, I think I've got it. Was your card the Seven of Spades? It was. Boom, there you go. That's... Peter Nard is direct mind reading using the ultimate tossed out deck. So that's the direct mind reading routine by Peter Nardi, and I absolutely love that. I thought that was so good. That routine that I just did is going straight into my act. I love the fact, and, and I'm telling you, this is going to be the tossed out deck. Tossed out deck for a stage performer is a dream routine. Talk about the cliche, pack small, plays big. It really does pack small and play big. Tossed out deck, you can do it to a big audience. You can get people from all the different parts of the audience to stand up and be a part of it. And you can do something that guarantees a standing ovation when you use the correct presentation. And by the way, Wayne Dobson's presentation is the best presentation. This takes it to a whole new level because you're not having to switch decks or hide anything it's amazing but I love the fact that I can have this in my gig bag and if I'm going to a close-up gig and I want to do something which is going to absolutely kill I can do this and think about it 
They look through the deck. They shuffle the deck. They put the elastic band on. They think of a card. They know all the cards are different. They think of a card. And then with no fishing, you tell them the card. I mean, it's incredible. It's incredible. Um, I know I said that the um, win and lose was my favourite trick. I think this is my favourite trick. I'm going to give this 100% just because I've done toss that deck in my act for years. This is taking my toss that deck routine, which is already Wayne Dobson's routine, and it's making it a million times better. And um, I, I, can, I can have it and do it close up as well. I'm going to get myself a couple of these. I'm going to get myself a couple of these. I need to get another one. When I see a trick that I absolutely love, that I know is going straight into my act, I always have a replacement because that way I know that I'm, I'm always going to have it. I love this. If you perform on stage and you do the tossed out deck, and if you don't, you should do, by the way, then you need to get this. If you're a close-up worker, the instructions from Mike Sullivan and Peter Nardi are, are so good. You'll be able to do this in a couple of different ways close up and kill with it. I'd still recommend it. That other routine that I talked about that Mike performs on the actual thing to a live audience. It's so good. You're getting three people involved. They're shuffling the cards. They're putting the elastic bands around themselves. Absolute killer. It's 100%. This is probably one of the best things that I've ever seen. And it's highly recommended. So there you go, guys. That's another review show special in the bag. Thank you so much for watching. Do me a favor. I want to know what you think now. So let me know in the comments down below. And please remember to support Wayne Dobson, support Mike Sullivan, support Dietrichs. Go watch the interview that I did with him on Wednesday. Wayne Dobson is a national treasure and his material is amazing. So go sign up to his mailing list. Go buy the stuff off his website and subscribe to his YouTube channel because his Coffee Morning YouTube series is brilliant. I highly recommend all of the stuff. I'm not too keen on the pets routine, but everything else... It's so easy. It allows you to focus on your presentation, which is what it should be all about. So yeah, amazing. Wayne, thank you very much. Anyway, guys, let me know in the comments down below what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, let me know. Are there other creators you want me to do a review show special on? Let me know who in the comments down below. Or maybe you want me to look at a particular genre. Let me know in the comments down below. I'm going to be back again tomorrow uh, on Monday with a Five by five at nine o'clock, a shorts at two o'clock, and a live at six o'clock. I'll see you then. Thanks very much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic TV.